Caleb Dennison here for Digital Trends, and I find myself once again at Samsung's HE preview event where we get to see all the hot new TVs that Samsung has for 2016 this year. And, uh, you know, it's funny, if we rewind to where we were last year, you and I stood right on a stage like this and talked about SUHD TV. You guys were a little bit ahead of the curve with SUHD. You guys were branding an advanced version of Ultra HD before the spec had really been settled on. And so now SUHD is back. Where are you taking that in, into 2016? Where we've taken SUHD in the year since we last spoke, we, Samsung has become much more focused and clear in our definition of what SUHD stands for. Specifically for 2016, all of our SUHD TVs, like this beautiful 9500 series behind me, have quantum dot, they have 1,000 nits of brightness, and their 10-bit panels. What does all that mean to a consumer? That all of our SUHD series deliver upon the most accurate color representation, the brightest picture, and the best contrast. So, when you pair Samsung's SUHD with our 4K UHD player, the consumer can get the absolute best picture quality available on the market. So there are a couple of different definitions for what Ultra HD is. There is now officially an Ultra HD Premium tier, which uh, you know means that you're getting the very best that's available. We've talked about Quantum Dot, which elevates things to billions of colors. We've got super high brightness for high dynamic range. How much of your SUHD TV line fits under that premium category? All of our 2016 SUHDs meet the UHD Alliance uh, UHD premium definition. So all of our SUHD 20, 2016 TVs meet that highest standard. What, I, what I've noticed is that the, the colors have gotten a little bit richer this year. The brightness has been heightened. A thousand nits is a big thing, so you have some pretty intense brightness for those spectral highlights that you see. But there's more going on now, I've noticed, that it's, it's more than just a picture quality improvement, which is a, a small step ahead from where it was last year, because it was, it was already pretty great to begin with. But now you're folding in a new kind of user experience, I've noticed. And there seem to be three key pillars to that. We've got some gaming stuff going on. We've got uh, Internet of Things, yep. which is a whole different conversation. Uh, and then, then there's a new uh, version of the Tizen uh, interface. So can you kind of go over those three big things and, and, and what's different this year? Absolutely. So actually, I think you did a better job than I could have explained it, Caleb. But you're spot on. Some of the uh, kind of umbrella technologies that we're wrapping into not only our SUHD TVs, but actually a lot of those great innovations uh, flow throughout our line. But to go one by one, you talked about uh, IoT. So what we mentioned today is that all of our SUHD TVs for 2016 can function as smart things hubs with a free uh, external dongle. That right now there are over 200 devices that are uh, smart enabled devices compatible within the smart thing system. So what it means with respect to the Samsung SUHD TV is that all of those smart things need a hub to talk to them and to coordinate. The Samsung SUHD TVs for 2016 have that hub capability built in and that's enabled by virtue of that free dongle. So you could be sitting down watching TV, the doorbell rings, you can see who's at the door, the baby monitor goes off, you can see what's going on in that room, you can dim the lights, you can lock the doors, open up the garage door, all that you're, you're controlling with your television? You are controlling it via the hub that's built into the TV, exactly, yep. What was the idea behind coordinating with uh, PlayStation and Gamefly to bring gaming into the, the television? Yep. Well, actually, last year, in 2015, we had PS Now capabilities in our smart TVs. This year, we're expanding the, or rather, in partnership with PS Now, expanding the roster of games, not only for our cloud-based, but also downloadable games. So we'll have over 500 titles. So we got gaming available. And then finally, and actually, the gaming kind of resides under this bigger umbrella that is operated by Tizen. That's your smart TV interface, but it's kind of become a little bit more than that from what I'm seeing right now. Um, what did you guys do to Tizen to kind of up the game this year? 
Well, I think um, as you mentioned, last year we uh, we featured Tizen operating system in our smart TVs. This year, all of Samsung's 2016 smart TVs will feature Tizen operating system. What we've done though is actually what you may have seen in the background is a cleaner, uh, more intuitive user interface. So utilizing that Tizen operating system and better processing capability in the TV, we've actually created an interface that seamlessly blends linear or your regular kind of cable or satellite or telco viewing, like your cable channels, with your over-the-top content, like you know a Netflix or a Hulu or Amazon Video or what have you. So, you know, one of the pain points that we realized consumers had is when you are trying to switch between your linear channels, your cable channels, and say Netflix OTT, it's not a seamless process. There's a lot of friction involved. You got to back out of one, jump into another, start up a movie. Here, we're actually enabling the consumer to toggle between those two just like they would be surfing channels. So not only is it a more seamless linear and OTT blend, but we're also making it a more customizable environment. Just like consumers are accustomed to on their phone, they can kind of put where their favorite icons and apps are. Similarly, they can configure their easy and sleek menu bar here. One thing that uh, you guys mentioned during your original presentation um, that I might be the coolest thing you have going on uh, this year is that when you connect a component, let's say that I connect an Xbox One into the TV, um, the TV can actually understand that's an Xbox One as opposed to a PlayStation, is that right? Do I have that right? You absolutely have that right. And and this is all part of Samsung's uh, striving for making it a more clean and uh, user-friendly experience. But you nailed it. Basically, um, what we're demoing in the back is connecting an Xbox for the very first time, the TV is actually uh, scanning what that input is and through a combination of both HDMI CEC and some of our own proprietary uh, image processing algorithms, we're able to detect whether it is, for example, an Xbox One or a PS4 or a Blu-ray player or what have you and then populate that icon. So no more having to hunt through the remote and key in, you know, hunt and peck and key in Xbox One. It, pops up the icon with the uh, source device. You know, you say image processing algorithms, and I, I worry that might go over some people's head. What I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the system is actually reading what's on the screen. It's seeing fonts, it's seeing color boxes. It will know if that is an Atlantic technology cable box versus a channel map, I mean, it can figure that out? Yeah, it'll actually be, and this is why the, the TV will ask the consumer to tune to that input so that it can get the signal, and then it'll search, for example, to see is there an Xbox logo, is there a PS4 logo, is there a Comcast Cablevision logo, and from that, combined with HDMI CEC capability, because sometimes that device is feeding that info as well, it'll blend that together and pop up the appropriate icon. So it figures that out, that's cool, but what does it do with that information? I mean, what happens with your remote control and, and the interface that happens on the TV? Really, the, the end result is that a uh, simple, like hassle-free population of your inputs without having to key anything in. So the next time you turn on the TV, it, it appears there as one of your sources. You have your cable box, you have your Xbox One, what have you. Okay, so we've talked about, you know, your cable, your, your dish network, your satellite service, you've got your Netflix, your Amazon, that's all great. But uh, so far, and you guys actually introduced this first in Germany earlier at IFA, um, you guys are the only ones to have announced an Ultra HD Blu-ray player. When can I get one? Fantastic news today. Can right now. You can actually pre-order it today. So the physical player will be available in Q1 of this year uh, and you can order it today through our retail partners in the US as well as through Samsung.com. Can you tell me what the price point on that is going to be? $399. 399 for Ultra HD Blu-ray player and that's going to deliver what, what over you get say from your Amazon or your or your cable. You know, we, we value all of our uh, content provider partners and they've worked with us uh, to bring tremendous 4K and HDR content to market. What you get with a 4K HDR, uh, excuse me, a 4K UHD player is the highest level of native 4K HDR content. So, uh, as I like to say, the analogy is the SUHE TV is like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari. Finally, you have the highest octane fuel to put in that to get the most out of your, your sports car. So that 4K UHD Blu-ray player combined with SUHD is the best picture quality possible. So your SUHD TV has been capable of doing a lot of different stuff, but now the Ultra HD Blu-ray is going to really deliver 
you know the the stuff that it can really take advantage of. Absolutely, the the maximum amount of H uncompressed HDR 4K information. Well, once again, a big year for Samsung at CES 2016 this time. Thanks for taking a second for uh, talking to Digital Trends. We appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Caleb.